It takes dedication. It takes the willingness to stand by and do what has to be done when it has to be done. You guys ready? You guys excited? I know you've got this. Just bring it from the heart, okay? We are tired of being beaten by policemen. We are tired of seeing our people locked up in jail over and over again. And then you holler, be patient. How long can we be patient? Eight minutes and 46 seconds change the world. When you see something that is not right, not just, not fair, you have a moral obligation to say something, to do something. What are the people about to be in store for? A lot of inspiration. A lot of inspiration. We believe in the power and the strength of our words. Our words can change the whole world. This is the most important and crucial period of your lives for what you do now and what you decide now at this age may well determine which way your life shall go. What are you planning on doing with your life? Five, four, three, two. The possibilities of this are endless, of what this could look like. And I don't even know at the end really what it'll look like quite yet. I just know it'll be awesome. Okay? So, with that, you guys each chose the page, okay? Tracks represents a, an empowering leadership opportunity for scholars at Belmont Elementary School. Talent, responsibility, accountability, commitment, knowledge, and scholars was a perfect fit. A building selects eight to 12 scholars and puts them forward. We look for scholars that are traditionally disproportionately negatively recognized. It is predominantly black and brown scholars. They picked like certain students by their like actions. I got chosen for my personalities, mostly because I'm a leader, I'm kind, I help people, I'm caring. Well, that's what my mom thinks of me. You're a leader, but you're also expected, it's, it's hard to explain, you're expected more things of a leader. It's kind of like you have to be like, do good in school and help, like you help your classmates out, you help, like you try to help your teacher out. Were they empowered, were they educated, and were they were entertained? Were they empowered people? Were they educated in what they're doing? They're a little scared. And were they entertained people? Okay. Annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Youth Rally in March is celebrating our 26th year. The mission and the purpose of it is to honor the life and dreams that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King had and also longtime local civil rights leader Dr. Leola Bullock had through promotion of positive youth action. We shall In order for this to work, we have to have a greater community that understands the purpose of what we're trying to do. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. We will change the world. Yes, we're young, but we are not too young to want our freedom. Let the children march. They will lead the way. It's one of those traditions that makes Belmont's culture a, a very viable culture. Okay, start typing Mrs. E's name, B-O-B-B-I-E. Hi, I'm Bobby Ehrlich, and I've been a part of the Belmont family for 32 years. What's made me stay? The children. <laughs> and not only she's a top-notch teacher, she's an engager. When you go around this community, you say Mrs. E, it resonates. <laughs> Right? And finally, and finally. Okay, so it's it's kind of a pause going to be in there. And finally. 
And finally, like really emphasize this, I'm bringing home the last point. It'll just always be a part of who I am as a human being now. The understanding, the love. I mean, that's honestly what it comes down to is just loving other people. You guys can go when you're ready. I'm ready. What you put out, you get back. Yeah, you'll be right here. So what are you guys going to ask me? You know, they like to refer to Mama Shanna. I call her Miss Hugs and somebody who gets the concept, gets, you know, gets the vision. My other part is the Martin Luther King speech. What okay. page? We talk so much about strength and positivity. We believe that they are shining stars. We believe in them and we know what they can do. I think you guys are doing a great job, but I really, really, really know that you are not working your hardest. That's where that brilliance of Pete Ferguson comes in. Oh, we want this to be so good that people are like, Man, I gotta see it again. Where are these cats at again? He is always willing to step out of the box until he can no longer be out of the box. Let me just a little bit that way. Yeah. Uh, testing one, two, three, Pete Ferguson, Lincoln Public Schools. We've got 44,000 scholars in Lincoln Public Schools. There's magic in each and every one of them. We have to take these opportunities and have the conversations. And there are going to be people that say, that's not your business. That's not your role. That's not what you should be doing. So Lincoln Public Schools then has to be the catalyst that spreads this equity to everyone. But it has to start in the school district. And so His footprint is on every aspect of this year's experience. COVID-19 can't stop us. COVID-19 will not stop us. The coronavirus can't stop us. This pandemic can't stop us. We will embrace our power. Keith Brown has been somebody who really touched me in a way that guides many of the things that I do in regards to tracks. And that started with you, sir. That started with you cornering me, all right? Yeah. Not just speaking to me, but cornering me at the National Youth at Risk Conference. It started with the ask, and then, of course, I accepted. And so since April, I've been a tracks advisor. That was the beginning. We were able to have him talk to every scholar at Belmont. I love myself. I believe in myself. And he gave an affirmation. I can, I will, I must, and I got this. So if Evelyn's talking, where should your eyes be? Evelyn. Where should your eyes be? Evelyn. Okay. We're teaching you life experience. We're not just teaching you um, what to say and how to say it. and that That's not the point. We're teaching you to be citizens and friends and good people. Yes, I want to take steps with you toward equity and justice. You, towards equity and justice. Come with me, right? Your mom's going to go, of course, child, I'm there. And we want to meet your family. We want to involve them with the process. You, you bring, that's right. You bring your mom out in you like that, OK? You're the first family of tracks. So think about it that way. First family tracks. The Clays. <laughs> You guys are just as much a part of this. You really are, okay? Raya said she was gonna get in the tracks program before she even got in it. And I said, what? Because LeBron got it in Keyshawn, and I said, you know, you gotta do really good. You know, they, you gotta do good and do good. And she's like, Mom, I'm gonna get it. I know I can. They got it, I can get it. I'm like, I know you can do it. And sure enough, true story. When she got in, she, she got it. I was like, wow. So Trax, you knew, you didn't know me, okay? From a hole in the wall, dealing with your kids, came in, I think first time we came in here. Well, to be honest, Pete, yeah. when I first seen that you were a black man, I was just like, oh, that's awesome, great. Maybe I wonder what he's, you know, that, that kind of yeah. brought me closer because I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, he'll understand this more. I was just super, super excited because I'm always like trying to push my kids to do better and do greater things in life, especially with LeBron. LeBron, he was the quiet. I mean, he barely talked. I was just like, 
talk, like say something, what's going on, you know? I think people want to have this experience because maybe like somebody looks up to you and like wants to be like, wants to be like you. It was awesome. I'm like, wow, this is going to be great. Despite the buzz, we, the children, walk together. I was so freaking happy when he literally, when he did that speech, I was amazed. Every day I would learn about some new person, so I would come home and tell them who they are. Yes, absolutely. And <laughs> Every day. <laughs> like, I never knew about Anne Frank or Hitler or Sylvia Mendez, nobody like that, but I'd come home and tell them about some people that I learned about and stuff like that. Voice. Where are those words coming out? Which words need to be there? Where do you need pauses, like here, Lariah? Every yeah. year they pick a book. Uh, this year we're doing the book project. Yes. A book Belmont. is chosen with the, the collaboration of the district and the project is invented. The book this year that we're honoring is This is the Dream by Diane Shore and Jessica Alexander. It's like all about like people back then people back then in like the 1900s. The book project becomes an opportunity their fifth grade year. The picture books that we've chosen, they're very impactful because of the pictures, but also they don't have a ton of words. And so every word I think is those authors put in there matter. And that's the thing with you, every word that you're gonna say matters. You take a look at the book and they're looking at two water fountains marked whites and colored. I remember some of these kids early on asking me what that means when it says colored. They didn't know what that meant. On this page, it said colored and then there was a star. But then I, ca I noticed that it said for colored only. Yeah, I was like, what does it mean by that? You go where you need to go and that's about the truth. And that's letting him know like this is a reality. And this was not that long ago. And actually, for some people, it's today. So if I would have walked into the white restroom, let's say the other one's full, you go to a game, the line's out. The other one's like, I need to just go in. I could have been arrested. That would have been the least of my concerns. You teach about the truth about how some people may treat him moving forward. And I hate to say it, not how some people, but how people will treat him. So there was a time where there were individuals that looked like me, okay, and many of you, that you could go into a store and you could not sit at a lunch counter. You couldn't go in and order food and sit down and eat. And so there became a point where people were like, I just don't think that's very fair. All I want to do is order a hamburger. When I first got the book, I kind of started reading it, and we all read it together, and you started showing us pictures. I kept reading it over and over and I kind of looked at the images and I still remember this one image where there was people, there was blacks sitting at white counter seats and they were pouring like juice, ketchup on them. Sometimes people would come up and they would get a milkshake and they would pour it over their head, like the pictures in the book. That's kind of like a page that I really didn't like to see. They would like literally pour food on them, like that's not kind at all. The last thing they wanted to do was become famous. What did they want? They what, wanted, they just wanted a, a peaceful life. A peaceful life. And a hamburger and a hot dog is part of that. It just makes me really sad and really, really sad and really mad that the people had to go through all of this for just, for just a change in the world. We are all the same on the inside, but somehow because of what I look like on the outside makes me so much different. It took what happened here in Wichita, Oklahoma City, St. Louis, Greensboro, North Carolina, and perhaps even the death of Emmett Till, what the black children at Little Rock High School went through to get a measure of justice. Those are current video clips, which shows you how near this actually is in a historical perspective. Yes. My dad was like from Alabama. Mm -hmm. He was like a kid when all that stuff. When all that happened? Yeah, because he was in Montgomery. Yeah. I mean, we have people in our lives who have lived this and lived it in Kansas, lived it in Lincoln, Nebraska, lived it in our schools. I remember I was walking to get a bus and I looked over in this huge public swimming pool and I thought, oh my goodness, that looks like so much fun. 
And for some reason I thought, there's no brown people at all. And that's when I thought, oh, I didn't think they would like me to be there. They, there's a reason why there's no one in there that looks like me. Um, the environment that I grew up in was more multi multicultural. Uh, all of my schools um, had uh, African Americans, uh, you know, white Americans, uh, Asian Americans, Latino Americans. When I spent my summers in Savannah, Georgia, it was just basically black and white. Hmm. Black and white for the most part. Um, the racism was more pronounced. We would go in certain department stores and I can remember uh, my grandmother and others keeping me close, saying, do not walk around this store. And I'm talking in the 70s now, right? okay? Even the early 80s, do not walk around this store, do not touch anything. I remember distinctively being watched, okay? Being watched as I would sometimes be allowed to walk around the department store. I knew it was pretty recent, but not as recent as like 1957. I thought it was more like in the 1800s. It is things uh, that will involve lynchings. It is things that involve Jim Crow. You can see them learning right while you're standing there, and they're able to ask questions. The lady, she said that someone died in, uh, I think it was Mississippi. Do you guys know who that was? It is things that involve a story about, alleged story about a young boy that's their age whistling at a white woman and not coming home. So they talked about a person named Emmett Till. He was pretty similar to your age and being beat and murdered and killed, and mom having an open casket. And unfortunately, um, some people didn't, like honestly, just care for him because of the color of his skin, and um, ended up, they killed him. You have to talk about the input that brought forward the output of the death of a young man that never truly got to live out his, his potential, who was a hashtag before there ever was hashtags. It's a really, really sad story, but it's also a really, really important story because it did change a lot of people's mindsets. They were like, what did a fifth grader do? What did a fourth grader do to deserve that kind of treatment? That was George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, <laughs> Trayvon Martin, before there ever was one of those individuals. We talk about empathy, we talk about compassion, but the worst thing we can do is shut it down and not talk about it at all because we're uncomfortable. No, we need to tell the children it's uncomfortable for us too, but we're gonna get through this and we're gonna get through it together. I believe everybody in education has that responsibility to make certain that we can help minimize any of those children experiencing eight minutes and 46 seconds in America. For me this summer, there were a lot of young people involved in different things that were going on, the protests. Have you guys familiar with some of this? Eight minutes and 46 seconds changed the world. How are we going to change this community and lives in this community and lives in the world? Eight minutes My brother went to the protest um, multiple times because I couldn't go. You went to one downtown? Me and my siblings and my mom, we went to a couple protests down by the Capitol. You have young people who are saying, you know what, I'm seeing this, and this isn't what I want my future to be. Y'all think y'all not being hurt, being out here? Right now, I need the loudest chant we can hear right now. And if you're going to control my future and this is what it's going to look like, I'm going to take it out of your hands, and I'm going to handle it myself. I need it to be heard across the world right now. I saw just a lot of people and a lot of chanting, I actually lost my voice for a little bit. Black lives what? Black lives what? Black lives what? Black lives what? I don't think somebody should ever die like that. I remember one night, somebody shot me a note, and honestly, it was, a, it was individuals who'd been in tracks, and I was so incredibly proud of them. But I will also tell you that I was scared. Elementary and middle schools, if you talk about the talk with many of our males, our, our males of color, what they're supposed to do, they will recite that like it's a book report. 
I got to train them to make sure nothing like this happens to them. Be cautious if you get pulled over, if things like this happen, you know, I shouldn't really have to tell them that. When is it going to stop? When is something going to be done? I can recall when my son was pulled over and surrounded by police, the lessons that he learned from us as his parents, from mentors, from teachers, all of those lessons were flashing before his eyes with every move he made. You know, he said he didn't even want to, you know, flinch. You're going to get up and speak, and some of you are going to be scared to death, okay? <laughs> Some of you are going to have all the confidence in the world, and your parents are going to be proud. We are the dinosaurs who have sat and who have waited out white. White only counters ignoring the hate. Some cursed at us and questioned us, but we, we embraced our power. He's saying what he's saying from his heart. He believed on them, and that's... His expression, you know, actually tells about it. And that by itself tells you a lot about the character of, of this guy. My name is Ibrahim Sebil. Uh, I am from Sudan. I came to the States almost for 1990, early 1990. We as people were created equal. As long as you're doing the right thing, don't ever feel there is anyone better than you. Always remember that, always. Think about a way to make it really creative. Now, Teaching is one of the tough jobs. The care that they received, the medical care that they received, was it equitable? Does it sound like it? Especially when you are teaching kids coming from different cultural backgrounds. When you understand someone's culture and background, uh, probably that will assist you a lot to help understand what his needs or her needs and how to address it. Please mark where your names are up to the parts that we have assigned so far. They had a shell, but now they have a full script. We'll make some tweaks, but this is kind of something that they can work on. When you think back to reading through the book, there are parts of the book here in the script, isn't there? It's bringing in all of these lessons, whether they're historical, whether they're to make you ponder and think and go, wow, wonder what I'd do with that today. We want them to become ingrained and part of their fabric and part of the core of who they are. So you have the script, okay? It should have numbered pages. I know some of you guys are nervous and some of you guys are excited. And some of you guys are like, okay, I just don't know what to expect with all this. That's all natural. It's learning how to be gritty and stick to things and not give up and put themselves out there in hard situations. Learn to do time management. Learn to take feedback. In July 16, 1960, A students utilized the white film. For some of you, this is a story, this is a skit, this is a play. But for other people that are going to be involved in this, this is their life. I want you to walk together and take steps with me solid. for justice for Rihanna Taylor. At the end of the day, I want them to take ownership of it. I want it to be what they want it to be, not what Pete, what Mrs. E wants it to be. Say it with some attitude. How long can we be patient? We want our freedom and we want it now. You want to be Dr. King, right? I saw you. I got that. I saw that picture. You're Dr. King. You come up there with some swag. Come up with this thing. I ask you, you watch those videos, right? What is your life's blueprint? Okay, go. What is your life's blueprint? Whatever that young man just shines. It's like giving me an opportunity to like speak for others. I'm kind of just like speaking for them. And so you must be involved in the struggle of freedom and justice. There you go. To watch him mature and become this young man who is driven by getting good grades and talking about college and justifying his thinking as he reads a text and he applies it to his own life. I have to like help my mom out and I have to realize it's like it's not a joke because right now my mom is going through a lot. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Very good. We're asking a lot of a fifth grade. Initially, I thought it was too far above them. They have to 
speak, they have to stand still, they have to enunciate, they have to sing, sometimes they have to dance. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child far, far from home. See how simple that is? Easy peasy. All righty then, I got two squeezes. Huh? I'm a proud member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. We're gonna step with the left. Step, step. Who knows where stepping originated from? Good, good, nice. Africa. Exactly. Stepping originated in Africa. So when the slaves had to work in the mines and they couldn't communicate with each other, so it was called African boot dancing. If you can count to four, you can do this. So step. Okay. Little outer crease. Go. Pick this foot back up. Step. Go. Okay. Oh. Okay, you guys. I'm not feeling it. Sounds kind of junky. Let's clean it up. If I do this, will it make you remember? One. Yes. You two who have strong voices, I need you to help me. Okay? I need you to sing. The guys. I love y'all. <laughs> if this is really hard, and it's hard to deliver the message the way that it should be delivered, should we put it in, or should we leave it out? I don't think we should leave that one out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everybody's voting to leave it out. Raise your hand. <laughs> you and Mr. Herling. <laughs> OK. Mr. Pete has been overruled, even though he's not up here. Just tell him, trust Miss Shannon. The cool part was about it is they learned about it. They learned about the history of it. You start looking at, okay, we've got to be within time constraints. How do we keep individuals' attention? We're going to do the full thing, but we're going to have to shorten just a little bit of it so it fits within the program. Right. Get a pen. Everybody get a pen or a pencil. Alex, what we need is take out whenever a building is constructed, take that paragraph out. Yeah. Building is constructed. Way to watch right there. Yep. Thank you. Okay. I think one of the most amazing, powerful aspects that come out of it, too, for the kids is it gives them another sense of camaraderie. I think one I said at the beginning of this, your goal is to do what? Step up. Step up. But it starts to set in as the reality of there's a sense of urgency, and that's part of the lesson. If you push them, they will never let you down. It's obvious who practiced and put in the time and who came today ready to take feedback and twist it and put it into your own. You don't want one of your team members falling down, you know, and everybody else is like working hard and then you're like, clunk. <laughs> you need to work on it more away from here. In front of the state capitol into the county city building. The goal was similar to that in 1965 when all we wanted to do was cross a crossing led by a man with a backpack and have the right to vote. Have you read the picture book in our room about her yet? Grab it tomorrow. Thanks. We challenged them to practice, to record themselves. Um, some of them got the opportunity to take cameras home to do that. Hello everybody, this is me, Mohammed. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be doing the beginning. If you want to say that we are drum majors, say that we are drum majors for justice. Doors closed for people like eight-year-old eight-year-old Hispanic Sylvia Mendez. And then can I try? Wait, wait. Can I try? With hate, malice, with falsehood. Hey, I didn't. Hey, I didn't. I always you... fight with love. Oh, oh, you see over there? Yeah, these are the same. Same fountains that stand in the square. Say that we are generated for righteousness. Yes. Well, I am. Wait, uh, oh my gosh. But we, we embraced our power and will not, not set our sights lower than anybody else's. What the heck are you sitting in the bathroom? I'm sure we have families that could do the, do the whole production themselves. <laughs> when Evelyn, 
we start practicing here at home. We told her that you are loud, you know. Evelyn Ungry. My name is Evelyn Ungry. Angelo Ungere. I'm Evelyn Dad. Ungere. One, two, three. This whole thing reminds me back home. Uh, we in elementary, or the system of education in Sudan, uh, the school, they teach us poems. There is a lot of poems that I, I still remember. I remember one of the poems in grade three. It says, Inani tiflun saghir, ilm You know? So I remember this when I was in third grade, uh, that the child is, is, is saying to himself, I'm a child, I have taken education as a light in my life. This is just a little translation about that poem, you know? And I don't know what I will do. Ya tara maza asir in dam akhdu kabiran. Hal tara akhdu adiban am zaiman am waziran. So that child will say, I'm going to take education hard in my life, but I don't know what I'm going to be. You know, Evelyn is a product of me. You know, she came from me. And it is so joyful when, uh, when you see your product, your child, uh, is, is doing good. Uh, and it, that's the wish of every parent that, you know, And I remember driving over there and I'm listening to the radio and I'm listening to what's going on. The nation today has witnessed a grave breach of its democratic... That's probably when it hit me. Man. These people, these people have this is... Like, this is real. Get to Belmont, and I just look at Pete, and I was like, "What is going on? Where you see wrong, or inequality, or injustice, speak out, because this is your country." Just the aura of the room was different. I had to weigh what was actually going on, but I also understood the value of that time. It was tough. I remember Ms. Shannon was there, and my, I mean, you're looking at your phone, you know, and that's one of the things, be attentive to the scholar, and you're just like, what's going on? And I remember Mrs. E said something. Like, sorry. Like Mr. Ferguson said, whatever is on your plate, you've poured your heart and soul and your passion into making sure that this important message is shared. And you're doing something amazing right now when the world needs to hear what love sounds like in somebody's heart, because that's what you're sharing. I, I get chills every time you look at one of us and pull us in. And even if it's just a camera that day, then you look into that camera and sell your message as much as you can from your heart and your gut. When Bobby said that at the end, um, it, it, to me, it was like, Wherever they were at with what they were doing, we needed to broadcast that out right now because that's, the, that's what people needed to see, not what was on TV. So put that paper to the side. You don't need it. You don't need it anymore. I promise you guys. I promise you guys, okay? You'll nail it. I tell you, you guys are really giving people. Don't be selfish with your voice. So this is the deal. We're gonna walk you guys through things. When we got to like, the UNO, I felt really good and I felt, I didn't feel pumped, but I felt really good. I felt really happy. This will be the room when I say fill a room, this is what I meant. Fill this room. Fill this room with your love and your passion. With COVID, they're only allowing 10 people at a time into the UNL ballroom. It makes me very anxious because I want to let them know when they're doing exactly what we ask them to do. One of our students has been in California since Christmas. She just got back today. I really want her to know that I'm watching and I'm, I'm there if she has a misstep in the words or anything like that. Um, so I'm trying to scream through that crack in the door. You do it. You know you can do it. I know you can do it. Woo -hoo! 
you know, it's like, okay, she's trusting me and I'm trusting her, but she knows that if she hears my voice, I'm still here, even though I can't be in the room. Go, no. Kennedy! It's your time to shine, so talk to each other. Tell each other where you think you need to slow down, give each other the feedback, whatever you need. I kind of felt like this day wouldn't come on where we would get close or anything. And then as I realized that it started coming up, we like started to improve way more just by the minute. When we built up that bond and everyone started like talking together and we, everyone was having like fun doing it. You guys got those scripts on the floor. What's that all about? Because we don't need it. Because we don't need them. Before we came here, Mrs. E gave Evelyn like a new part and Evelyn didn't know it. And I could tell she was practicing because when she came here the next day, she remembered that like when her part was and she memorized all the words in like only like one night. COVID has just really thrown a monkey wrench into everything. I mean, we went from 800 people and we were just like, man, okay, it doesn't get any better than this. To no more than 12 people being in a room. I started thinking, mm, <laughs> what's this gonna look like? You guys have worked so hard for this. So if you have to take an extra moment to take a breath, Typically, someone would be in the crowd cheering, go ahead, baby, right? They would normally be doing that, but you're not gonna have that. So if you mess up, just take a breath. This is your moment. Once we're in the ballroom this time, it's just one time, all right? One shot, one opportunity to get it right. The words that you're sharing, remember, oftentimes, are words of others that we honor today, right? This is your way of getting to serve the community. It's this inspiring to me. Inspired? Awesome. We're ready. These oh. are the kids that are here and ready to go. I want my parents to like feel like, wow, my daughter is really making a difference in the world. Thanks for Muhammad. There you go. It can really touch them. It can um, leave an impact on their life. Right up here, Ms. Emily. I couldn't really sleep last night because I couldn't wait for this day. Like, I couldn't sleep at all. They were self-sufficient. They got in the room, I heard them practicing. What did he say? No seat, no ride. They knew what they needed to do. We, we are the dinosaurs. sat, no waited. And they supported each other. This is the drink. Our nation was founded on the belief that all men are created equal. Nearly 200 years after Today, our rally in March will look a bit different than it has for the last 26 years. The look may be different, but the content will still seek to empower, educate, inspire, and entertain. It's crazy to know that we're still fighting for the same thing he was fighting for then. And we thought that we had got what we wanted, and we thought we accomplished everything, but we haven't. And we still got to keep fighting for it. We encourage you to actively participate in this year's virtual program by utilizing your social media platforms. Dr. King stated, there is no noise as powerful as the sound of the marching feet of a determined people. For 26 years, we You're doing an awesome job. We'll just keep going, keep going. We're just gonna make that a little bit shorter for you. And then let's just keep practicing it over and over again. So I'm gonna cut this off. Don't allow anybody to make you feel. So you don't have to read that. And then you can read that paragraph. I was in the Belmont group for fourth and fifth grade. I used to be super shy as a kid. I'm counting on you to help us reach justice and equality for everyone. Now I'm like one of the loudest kids in my class. I think it started to hit home that this was actually going on and what this all was because they really didn't know the full context of it. So they're sitting in this room watching pieces and other people up there. And it is the responsibility of us to make this city country and world better. Not tomorrow, but right now. And so I think in some ways they were probably like, oh, this is really happening. This isn't like the Thursday before where it's a rehearsal or it's not the library. 
Miss Z says he's saying it, but my part's at the beginning and his part's at the end, and then they are like combined into one. Oh, paragraph. so it might be something where you say stuff, and then he says stuff, and then it's back to you again. I mean this, but I don't remember that. It's okay, we'll check it. Okay, no, I'm gonna just say the part. You wanna tell them in about probably five minutes, they're gonna go up on stage. Emmett Till was my George Floyd. He was my Richard Brooks, Sandra Bland, and Breonna Taylor. He was 14 when he was killed, and I was only 15 years old at the time. I will never, ever forget the moment when it became so clear that he could have easily been me. All right, so you guys are gonna move into the other room at 9.20. Okay. So at 9.20, we will see you guys on stage. Thank All right, you. awesome, thank you. Okay. Remember how we talked about what was going on at the Capitol? This is that line. When we intend to do good, we do. When we intend to do harm, it happens. We each of us must come to realize that our intent always comes through. We need to see the bigger picture to fix all the wrongdoing being done in the world. We all have voices, and most of us just don't know how powerful it can be. Mrs. E had something she needed to attend to. I know you've got this. Just bring it from the heart, okay? She was still able to inspire them and motivate them. All right, thinking of you. Go get them. Change the world. Really, right? Yep. You guys ready? You guys excited? Yep. You guys are awesome. All right. Here we go. Hey. Okay, guys. Professional the whole time. That starts now. How are you feeling, Evelyn? Nervous. How are you, Anna? I feel nervous. You feel nervous? You're going to do your thing. How about you, Peyton? Huh? How are you doing? Good. Are you, you awake? Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Muhammad, how about you? Good. You going to knock it out of there? Okay. Kennedy, what about you? How you doing? This is my pregame interview. How you doing? Good. Good. How about you, Laura? Good. You gonna do all right? How are you doing? What are the people about to be in store for? A lot of inspiration. A lot of inspiration. What are they, what are they about to get? What are they about to get from me? Some passion. Uh, Some passion. Some passion. Confidence. All right. Wait, so if I'm speaking and Evelyn has last part, do we all get off stage after that? After the, I love myself, I believe in myself, after that, that's when we leave. You got this, you got it. We've had a lot of changes thrown at them in the last hour and a half. Man, they're amazing. They've got this. I'm excited, but I'm also really nervous. Two minutes, Pete. And I am Two minutes. just thinking, excited thinking about the possibilities of how many people these kids are going to empower here in just a few minutes. We had a situation this morning that um, took me away for a little while, but I came bolting <laughs> down through the campus. Even today, yes today, in 2021, there is still segregation. The 2021 Belmont Track Scholars bring to life This Is The Dream by Diane Z. Shore, Jessica Alexander, and illustrated by James Ransom. This is the dream. Our nation was founded on the belief that all men are created equal. I'm here to represent a struggle that has gone on for 300 or more years. However young you are, you have a responsibility to seek to make your nation a better nation in which to live. We are the diners who have sat and who have waited at white. White only counters ignoring the hate. Honestly, uh, I, I just felt like uh, on a crime. I, I was so pleased, so happy, so emotional. A lot of people don't think that younger kids are capable of understanding everything that's going on in the world right now. I want you, yes you, to take steps with me for justice for Brianna Taylor. I, I walk together, taking 2.23 miles of steps of kindness, honoring Ahmaud Arbery. This is like living proof that they do and that they're acting in it as well. We must walk together for eight minutes 46 seconds for equality for George Floyd.
So many people think, oh, they're so young, they can't understand this, but they do. They live it from their hearts and souls. They brought it, they shined, they empowered, they shared their voices, and they delivered the inspiration that the world needs. Let us be sure our hands are clean in the struggle. Let us never fight with falsehood or violence, hate, malice, but always fight with love. We, we will be able to live with people as their brothers and sisters. No seat, no ride. No seat, no ride. What did we say? No seat, no ride. Yeah! Sincerely, I am so glad. I did tears up. It shows that those kids, they, they have what it takes. Even when the words not seem harsh or offensive, the impact is still shattering. It's just amazing to see the things that she wants to do at this age, and I'm so very proud of her. What each of us must come to realize is that our intent always comes through. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep on moving forward. And so as I weep now, it's because I, I think back to what I saw and they believe every word. And then to see them say, we're not finished yet. But I'm not done yet. And they said those eight affirmations. I love myself, I believe in myself, I'm proud of myself, I'm a genius. I can, I will, I must, and I got this. And when I see that, I know there's hope for the future. I'm, I'm convinced that there's hope just to see them when they finish um, and, and just see their chest pumped out and honestly realizing but not fully realizing what they just did um, is, is awesome. That's the power of being a team and everybody caring enough about one another to help take care of each other, right? That was amazing. I think their ability to do that was well beyond their years but I also think it becomes a life skill that they know that they'll need, you know, moving forward. Sometimes it's the only opportunity that someone has to interact with you, and you have that chance to inspire them, and as you all have so wisely said, challenge them to make a difference. Challenge them to walk with you. I was like, Oh my gosh, to my family. It's like, come, come, look at my babies. They're doing <laughs> such a good job. When you got up there and you were so confident and so, I mean, you just were right on. And you guys have come so far that we probably feel it more than anyone. Your parents feel it as like we do. So don't ever go somewhere else and let them tell you that you're not special or you can't do it or you shouldn't be involved. When you walk into your middle school, wherever it is, do not let them take that shine away from you. Love adults, but there's some adults who don't want you to shine brighter than them. Pete and I often say to them, you know, we hope that it's not the best thing they ever do in their life. Hopefully it was one component and it was a, a seed, it was a beginning of where they found that confidence in themselves, where they found their passions. I look forward every year to them presenting in front of their peers because it's like they are looking at their friends in a different light. Some of their faces are just like in awe. They're like, wow. As an adult, to watch it happening is like, this can only be good for everyone. They realize the significance that it's not just a story, that it's real. We are not sharing stories, we're changing lives really. So when you share the stories that we're telling, then you're really just changing lives and you're changing people's perspective. They want to breathe life into equity and make people really critically think. Um, make them feel comfortable being uncomfortable when they hear certain things. I believe education is the right path for success. It takes time, it takes effort, it puts stress, 
and the whole family. However, we need to be patient, we need to be, uh, need to be kind, and above all, we need to be supportive. Just to even see them, you know, being in this program just made a difference for me. It made me feel good as a parent. It's something that they can take with them. It's almost like now that they know they have it, they feel like they can use it. You don't have to wait till you're 45 years old or you're 60 years old and you're looking back and saying, what have I done with my life? They're already realizing they're doing it now. And as young people, you don't have to wait. You can, you can make a difference in someone else's life. We need to know as adults, um, not just reinforcements are coming, but they're here. They're here. And, and they're in the shape of some people that are 5'2 and 5'3, but throughout history, they've been the most powerful reinforcements and leaders um, that we've had.